give you a bunch of coach speak. That team's been better than us. They're where we want to be in a couple of years. Obviously, Nicholson's a, a pro. He manhandled anybody we put on him. He manhandled any defenses we threw at him, multiple defenses, different guys running at him. You know, not only does he score the ball, he passes the ball. He's very patient. I don't know if you could have a more efficient line than he had. I mean, eight or nine from the foul line, two or three from three, and ten or fourteen altogether. You know, so I think he's, in my opinion, he's the premier, you know, NBA prospect in the conference, without a doubt. Uh, you know, especially as a front court player. But they, you know, they got good depth top to bottom. They're a team that's, you know, that's competing to, uh, to get, you know, to the top of the conference and. Uh, they got some veteran players, so they're good ones. Coach, why didn't Chris start tonight? Can you talk about that? Yeah, I mentioned it before the game on the radio. Uh, he, you know, violated the team rule the other day. Not a major rule, but you know, we respect the clock, we respect our teammates. There's a whole bunch of things we talk about, and obviously that had no outcome in the game again. But it is a, it is a distraction when you, you know it's the third time I think this year that he hasn't either started or didn't play in a game because of. Uh, Nonsense. So, some growing up's got to go on. Aside from Nicholson, the team, uh, the Bonnie still shot 64% from the team. Man, I mean, they just drilled it. But, you know, once again, I think the two big guys took a bunch of two footers. You know, they just manhandled once again uh, our big guys in the paint, and we weren't able to get around it. And, uh, you know, their, their catches were so deep that our guards couldn't get there sometimes before the ball was shot. That's how deep they were burying our, uh, our front court guys. So, uh, you know, something we got to work on, obviously. Talk about the delay in the first half. I mean, you yeah, it doesn't help any, obviously. I mean, you know, maybe a couple minutes would have helped us take the wind out of their sails. And I said to the guys, whoever goes on the run coming out of this is going to have a chance to win the game. And then the same thing at the end of the half. And, then, you know, they went from 13 to 18 on us to start the second half. So, uh, you know, that, that can't happen. Those are important five minutes. But, yeah, the delay is... It's, Crazy, and uh, you know we're gonna alleviate that problem tomorrow morning. You know, we'll or two more backwards. Can you talk about the team's chances to make the A10 tournament? Well, obviously they diminished drastically. Now, you know, we got to find two more wins to get to four, and then to win a tiebreaker with GW, and they, so they can't win out. We got to find two, and uh, you know, a very good LaSalle team coming in, going to play Rody at Rody, which is going to be a a rock fight, and then you have Temple coming in, who's the premier team in the league. So I think, you know, those, the, the, the Charlotte Dayton games were the ones that I really thought we could make our move, and if we win those, we could build off that. But you could see the guys are lacking confidence, uh, the young guys, especially. I had a conversation with, you know, with Brandon and Brian Smith when they came off the court and told them, you know, they can't, they can't lose their confidence. And it's hard because they both struggled shooting the ball so poorly. And it, that's really just what it is. It's young guys who've lost their confidence, and, the, and they're not used to losing. And the losing is kind of beating them up. But you know, all I said in the locker room was, "Hey, we're all men. We'll take care of it tomorrow. There's no pouting. Uh, you, know, you get a beat, you get beat up. You, you, you got to take it out on somebody else. You know, so that's what we got to do." Can you comment on the student section basically empty out, basically half Bonnie fans at the end of the yeah, I didn't realize it was half body fans. At the, oh, you mean in the arena? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, look, if I, I wouldn't stay for that game if I had to study. I understand, you know, plus the delay doesn't help. A lot of people, you know, you come to a game, you plan on being out the door at 9 o'clock. There's, a, there's an, a delay that delays the game, what, an hour, another, one full hour. I knew that was going to happen unless it became a barn burner, so that's fine. Students are, the students have been great. I know they'll be here Saturday. we got a big whiteout thing going. And then, you know, we got Temple the last game, too, so at home, so. I have no gripe at all with the support we've gotten here from our uh, from our fans. A couple guys behind the bench don't know what they're talking about, but that's a whole other story. When I hear some of the comments they make, but anyway, uh, you know, we will survive. Cool. Thank you guys. Thank you very much. Thank you.